jug town. As early as 1750, there are records of potteries in the section of North Carolina. Up to the Civil War, they made everyday things. Later, they became famous for whiskey jugs. That's where the name came in. By the end of the 19th century, there were nearly 50 potteries in operation in a 20 square mile area. As the years passed and the demand for what they call dirt dishes dwindled, that number shrank. Today, there are still several healthy potteries in business in the region near Seagrove, North Carolina, the oldest ceramic making operation in the nation. When the people first started making pots in this area around here, they had to be close to the clay because, you know, the only way they had to move in it was just by moving wagons. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't have went too far to get the clay. And that must have been the reason they settled here. There's plenty of clay, plenty of wood. Today's Jugtown pot makers are folks like Vernon Owens, a third generation North Carolina potter. The clay is still dug and ground not far away. From clay pit to clay pot, it's all done by hand. For decoration, the distinctive Jugtown squiggle. Yeah, it's just all in the speed of how, how fast you move this stick up and down, what kind of a line and, and design you get on there. Now, if I got the wheel going really slow and move this thing fast, I get the, the line, more of a humps in the line, you know, and it's just every, every design comes out different. The finished pottery is still functional in design. The colors, warm earth tones. Here and there, some Blue Ridge blue. Some are still the natural orange color of the native clay itself. If you're looking for a good word to describe the work from the Jugtown section, that word could be traditional. Because history's here, kneaded right into the clay. It's not every section of the country that can make the claim that their major industry has been here as long as the country. But that's what they can say in the Jugtown section of North Carolina. This is Andy Johnston.